for me, it's very important when it comes to innovation that are not just an evolution of what, you know, oh, we expected that to happen, but it's much better, uh, but a complete revolution. First innovation, I think, it started like the dawn of man. You know, we're creating, starting to create tools, you know, to allow us to like perform tasks that are kind of complicated with just the hands, right? The hand axe, I don't know. For me, that was like one of the most quintessential uh, pieces of innovation. I think we're born with this curiosity. As we grow older, we start to build these walls. The can't walls, I call them, you know. I can't do this or I can't do that. So when it comes to creating something or developing something, try to go back to being like a child about it. My name is Oluwase Sosanya. I call myself an innovation design engineer. My stepfather, He's probably the biggest influence when I was a child. He came into my life when I was about eight years old, and I just remember like seeing this, you know, this huge black dude. His name is Hercules. He talked to me like I was a, an adult, really. He had his own barber shop. I remember like for the first year I was probably sweeping hair, and then slowly he started to introduce me to chess. He just kind of showed me some principles of chess. I think he realized very early that like I'm not going to engage with that kind of academic environment in, in, in the way that they wanted me to. School was tough. It wasn't until middle school that I started to find like my group of friends that I wanted to associate myself with. We'd skateboard all over the neighborhood. We were never good, like not like the kids today. But we would go down to the skate park, we'd go in the morning, but in the morning we had the BMXers there. So we figured if we got bikes and went down there, they would let us ride. So we started just hacking together bits and bobs of bikes. I think I had like an old swing Stingray, which is clearly not a BMX bike, but we tried to make it a BMX bike. <laughs> It was kind of a joke, these like Frankenstein bikes trying to, to go down the skate park. As you're looking at other people's bikes, looking at your bike, you're kind of examining what parts are what. You know, you're looking at the geometry of the frame, you're looking at the materials that they're made out of. So at a young age, you're starting to like identify what is quality based on its construction or based on its, uh, its material makeup. So I ended up picking up these um, construction jobs, framing houses. First, it's really hard work. I mean, with two guys, you can frame a whole house. So we're talking about lifting beams, building second stories. It wasn't something that I was thinking would be my career, but it was something that I knew I was gonna use at some point. I started looking at places where I can position myself maybe as, a, as an intern. So I was shooting emails out to all these little guys and no one got back to me. But uh, this one guy, Ken Tamita, he, um, he actually replied to one of my emails and he said, why don't you just come down? He told me, you know, straight point blank, you're gonna be sanding for the first three months. And every day I'd be sanding, like, it's the most mundane task ever. I just said, look, I'm gonna be sanding, and I'm gonna be looking at whatever he's doing. I'm just gonna track him, like, completely, you know? There was a good friend of his across the street who was doing, like, laser engraving, came over and said, you know, like, I just bought this, uh, this iPhone case, you know? I'm like, what do you think about making one of these out of wood? This is the uh, bamboo iPhone case that opened me up to the world of design. The design took some clues from Apple's design language, I would say. You have the flat sheet of bamboo, and as the machine's cutting, you start to you know, reveal what it actually is. And that feeling can never be reproduced. And, uh, and it was picked up really well, and the company is doing well to this day. So I was a part of something that went really well. But later it became clear that I, I know that I have this idea to eventually be designing things um, that come out of my head like, and put those into the, to, to the world. I stumbled upon the, the course of the RCA. The school in, in all is really about materiality. It's really about producing um, something that exists. At first I really was interested in bulletproof. So that's like the ultimate um, absorption and dispersion of energy, right? But secondly, I was thinking about our textiles that we wear, and if we want any sort of protection, let's say in sports, you know, you're wearing like really thick pieces of foam covered in, in textile. You, you want the protection, but at the same time, you don't want to sacrifice the ability to perform. It just seemed like with the, with the textiles that we wear today, it's, it's the same kind of stuff we've been wearing since the Egyptians walked the earth. I wanted to create something that could take a lot of shock, a lot of impact but wouldn't be a one-time use. Something that can take the shock and continue to take shock. Why 
why not make a specific machine to make these structures that I had in my head? It's kind of a proof of concept. So the 3D Weaver is a, it's a loom that's designed to weave three-dimensional um, builds of, of textile material. With the Weaver, you're able to control the structures, and that's the beauty. So you can gauge how much shock absorption you want. To achieve the tolerances that I wanted, I would have to use the, a proper metal shop. I couldn't just kind of hack some stuff together. So I used a combination of a lathe and a mill to get all the precision parts made. When selecting the material, I wanted to make sure that the sole focus wasn't the machine, it was actually the material that it was producing. Thus, I chose to use a transparent Perspex. Using Perspex really allowed me to start playing with new types of, of grids and layouts. I didn't have to stick to this kind of dot matrix map. And I was able to lay out the warped, I call them warp tubes actually. And by replacing the warp with these tubes, I'm able to like lay out a new type of grid. And that was where I laid the, the sole for the shoe. The programming stage was really just hours in the computer, hours trying to write little bits of code. I was here late night, every night, trying to figure out how this thing's gonna come together. I wasn't designing this for an audience to be engaging with it at the level that they're engaging with it online now. I was designing this to deliver a textile innovation. I was getting people that were involved in the medical industry talking about how this, we scaled this down, this could be used for artificial ligaments, and they're looking for just this type of material that can be pre-programmed. So what I was presenting was a possible new material that people can play with. It's really impressive to see how, you know, if you take your idea all the way, what kind of feedback you'll get, or what, what kind of people will, will, will highlight what you've done. I think this is the beginning of my journey moving forward. I'm very young in my philosophy. I know now it's about materials, it's about how we can manipulate them, it's about how they may uh, relate to a human's use, um, and that's kind of the path that I'm on at this moment. Going from uh, framing a house to, uh, to you know, making a new textile is, is uh, it's a very unlikely story, but it's, somehow it makes sense because I look at all the checkpoints along the way.